hemophilia is the topic. And uh, hemophilia, there's two main types that we're going to discuss, uh, hemophilia A and hemophilia B. And hemophilia A essentially is a deficiency in factor 8. And they always tend to use these Roman numerals, so I'll put the Roman numeral. Hemophilia B is a deficiency in factor 9. And the Roman numeral, I believe, is... I never use Roman numeral, so anyhow. Now, what are factors? Deficiencies, but deficiencies, but what are, what are these um, factors? Well, factors basically are clotting proteins. And these clotting proteins essentially help with coagulation. So they, they participate in blood coagulation. And if you don't have them, or if you have a deficiency, then you can bleed and bleed and bleed. So before I get into some of the symptoms, I wanted to touch on some very important points about hemophilia that are very commonly tested. Uh, this is an X-linked disorder. And it's always the genes are located on the X chromosome. So if you have two parents, the gene is going to be on the X chromosome, so we'll, we'll call it an H. So as a result, it, it affects males exclusively. Now females can inherit it and be a carrier. So females can be carriers. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But generally speaking, um, it's boys that get it. Now, another thing that's important to mention is when you um, have uh, bleeding, since this is uh, hereditary, this is going to start occurring very early, as sometimes as early as birth. So it's a diagnosis that usually you make very early on in life. It's not going to be something that an adult will come. Uh, I mean, that's highly unlikely. So that's another very important point. So, let's get into some of the symptoms. Well, obviously, excessive bleeding. Um, but there's a couple of very, very uh, key things that I wanted to mention. And one of them is hemorthrosis. And what that is, essentially, is bleeding into a joint. And there's a picture of this at the very beginning of the video, before you click play. And basically, it's the picture of a knee that is highly, like if this is somebody's leg, this is their foot, this exaggerated area that I made into a swollen area is a hemarthrosis basically. And essentially it's a collection of blood in a joint space. And um, that is a, a very characteristic uh, finding in people with hemophilia. Another thing that can happen at birth that can help you identify is the scalp hematoma during delivery that can uh, or after delivery there can be excessive uh, bleeding into the scalp so these are some of the seem some of the things that are mentioned in clinical vignettes how do you diagnose it well there's some basic blood tests PT PTT and then uh, platelet count And then you measure the factor levels as a percentage. Uh, the factor 8 and factor 9 assays. Now here's the results. The PT, which is known as a prothrombin time, uh, is going to be normal. So N for normal. PTT, which is partial uh, thromboplastin time, is elevated and that's very important to remember platelet count is normal factor 8 and factor 9 as given as a percentage normal is like 100% varies between 50 and 150 actually 
but in someone with hemophilia, it's going to be less than 5%. In order for you to have normal hemostasis in the body, you have to have at least 30% of these factors. And um, if it's less than 5%, it's hemophilia. And some people, it's even less than 1%, some patients. So it's very, very uh, um, low. But please remember this one right here. It's just one of those things you just have to memorize, unfortunately. There's no logic way of, you know, really understanding um, a lot of these lab values. And, you know, it, it's really uh, an issue of the factors and not the platelets. So don't get confused. Um, so how do you treat it? Well, the treatment is you give the factor. The, the factors that's, that is deficient, the replacement, replacement of, of the deficient factor. So if it's factor 8, you give factor 8, hemophilia A. If it's factor 9, you give factor 9. So if it's hemophilia A, you give factor 8. If it's hemophilia B, you give factor 9. And um, that can be given as a product. Uh, it's uh, given in... Um, to raise the factor levels in the body. One important thing I want to mention before I move to some clinical vignettes is that sometimes you're not sure what the actual factor deficiency is or the factors are unavailable. And if that's the case, then what do you do? Well, you give something called fresh frozen plasma. And the reason is fresh frozen plasma contains both factor 8 and factor 9 and that can be given. The only problem is that it's not very um, it doesn't really raise the factor 8 and 9 levels to the to the point where you can prevent or control bleeding it's more of a just a replacement therapy um, and it's only used if the factors are unavailable uh, or if you haven't really identified what exactly the patient has uh, in terms of specific uh, diagnosis. So let's take a look at some vignettes. A four-year-old boy was brought to the hospital with a swollen right knee. His only sibling, his sisters, mentioned that when they are playing uh, this morning in the backyard, he jumped off the slide and immediately complained of pain in the right knee. His mother then recalled that some months ago he bled for an unusually longer time following injury with a razor. Diagnosis of either hemophilia A or hemophilia B this was suspected and he was transfused with fresh plasma and scheduled for measurement of serum levels of factor 8 and factor 9. Awaiting these measurements, which of the following lab values would be consistent with the diagnosis of hemophilia? Well. As we remember, the platelet counts are normal. Platelet normal. PT, which is prothrombin time, is normal, but PTT is elevated. And that's a partial thromboplastin time. So let's see which one of these. I think it's A right here. And notice uh, they gave the fresh plasma before the serum levels of factor 8 and factor 9 were identified. And that's, you know, sometimes done um, in severe hemophilia. But uh, the fresh frozen plasma should be used only if the replacement therapy is absolutely necessary and the factor concentrate are unavailable. Or the coagulopathy has not been precisely identified and that's the case in this uh, clinical vignette. And final one, a five-year-old boy is brought to the emergency room because of painful swollen knee joint. Um, the boy had fallen while playing and the joint has subsequently began to swell. The mother reports the boy was known to have hemophilia B, replacement of which of the following is indicated. Well, straightforward question, they're asking you which factor. So if you remember if you hemophilia A, was factor 8. Um, there's the Roman numeral and hemophilia B was factor 9 which would be this one.